How do I pay less income taxes in retirement? This is a question that a lot of people ask all the time. How do I find a way to pay less income taxes? And income taxes are on the minds of retirees. And it's because income taxes, even while you're retired, is gonna be one of your largest household expenses. So whenever we can find ways to lower that tax bill, we wanna figure out how to do that and we wanna implement that strategy. And so in today's video, I'm gonna talk about the power of income splitting and what it can mean to a retiree's income tax situation. I'm gonna show some examples of how income tax works and I'm gonna talk about three different types of income that can be split. I'm also gonna talk about income that some people sometimes ask me about if it can be split and I have to remind them that no, it can't be split. And then at the end of the video, I'm gonna offer you some strategies and some ideas of things you can do if you wanna learn more about how income splitting might impact your financial plan. But if we haven't met yet, my name is Mark Walhout. I run an investment advisory and financial planning firm called Walhout Financial. I help people with retirement and I created this channel to share ideas and concepts that I'm using to help people with retirement every single day. If you wanna get more videos like these, consider subscribing to the channel and hit the bell icon so that you're alerted when new videos are posted. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you have questions or comments, leave them below. I'm very quick to answer questions and the things that you reply to the videos give me good ideas for things that I can talk about in future videos. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. We're talking about the concept of income splitting today. And before we sort of dive into that, I wanted to use sort of an illustration to explain how income splitting works. So we're gonna start with a very simple example. We have a couple, one member of the couple earns $120,000 in income. The other member of the couple earns uh, $0 of income, they're a stay-at-home spouse. The, I ran this situation through my income tax calculator at taxtips.ca and I'll link to that below. If you wanna use it, I use it uh, quite a lot just to do simple income tax projections. And so this individual who's earning $120,000 in taxes this year would pay around $25,000 in income taxes. Uh, all that tax would go to the individual that's working. There's no income tax to be paid by the individual who's not working. So their total tax bill in their household is 25K. Now imagine the same pre-tax uh, income amount could be split between the two spouses. Let's say now that instead of one spouse being at home, they both work and they both earn $60,000 per year. When I run that scenario through the income tax calculator, their total household tax bill is around $17,000, which represents a tax savings of about $8,000 per year. So that's what I'm sort of talking about when I'm talking about the impact of income splitting. It, me it basically means lowering the average tax bill across your household. Because Canada has a marginal income tax system where the more money we make as we move up through the income tax brackets, the higher the percentage of tax that we pay. If we can move the money between those buckets and even them out, it will result in a lower average tax rate and it'll lower your household tax bill. So the bad news is that while we're working, there's limited opportunities for us to effectively income split. We can't split uh, regular employment income. But the great news for people who are retired is that the Income Tax Act gives us some really cool opportunities to do to kind of create that effect inside of our finances is to move income from one spouse to the other, lower the average tax rate in our household, spread that those dollars between our two income tax buckets and push that tax bill down. And now I'm going to talk about the three main types of income that you can split in retirement. And I'll go ahead and start sharing my screen again. So the first big one is pension income. So if you're a member of a, uh, a pension plan at work, a private pension, uh, the income that you generate from your pension can be split. So you can split up to 50% of that pension income with your spouse or common law partner. There are some criteria here if you are below the age of 65. If you're below the age of 65, it has to be a lifetime or it has to be a registered pension plan and it has to be lifetime payments. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that age 65 significance in a moment. But the big one is pension income. You can split that pension income with your spouse provided that it meets certain criteria. The second big one is withdrawals from a RIF account, a LIF account, life income fund, or a locked in RIF, locked in retirement income fund account. In this case, if in order for you to split the income that is coming from RIFs, LIFs, and LRIFs, uh, the account holder needs to be over the age of 65. Recall that with pension income, that age requirement doesn't exist. But with um, withdrawals from RIFs, LIFs, and LRIFs, the account holder needs to be over the age of 65 in order that they can split or share, excuse me, split that income with their spouse or common law partner. So that's the second type of income that can be split. And then the third main one is Canada pension plan income. So I make a special note here. 
Income splitting can kind of have the same effect with Canada Pension Plan, but it's technically technically called CPP sharing. So both members of the couple need to be over the age of 65. Sharing needs to be a two-way street. We can't have one spouse sharing with the other and the other not participating. Uh, and the amount of CPP income that can be shared between the couple is prorated for the amount of time that the couple lived together during the contribution period. So that's a bit of a mouthful, but basically what that means is that the amount of CPP that you can share with your spouse and vice versa is limited to the number of years that you live together during the years that you contributed to the plan, which are between the ages of age 18 and 65. So those are really the two um, fence posts for that. And that's how we calculate how much pension can be shared. In the show notes, I'm going to share with you uh, the forms that you can use to initiate uh, pension income splitting as well as CPP sharing. Um, I'm going to include links to those so that if you want to check out those forms, you can find them uh, for uh, CPP sharing. You can actually just do it online. You can go to the um, Service Canada portal and initiate that process through uh, electronic means, or you can fill in the form and send it in uh, the form that I'm going to link. Um, for pension sharing, uh, that is done on the tax return. And so that it's not actually uh, done pro like before the, the money is paid out. It's done at the end of the year when you're doing your income taxes. So just mention it to your tax preparer. Like likely if you have pension income and you're eligible, your tax preparer is sort of bringing this to your attention and they're initiating this for you. But that form, the uh, T1032, I believe it's called, is the form that um, you'd fill out and submit with your tax return in order to complete that uh, pension sharing effect. So those are the three main types of income that can be shared in retirement, excuse me, can be split and shared in retirement. I'm getting all mixed up here. Um, so that, and that has a huge impact on people who are retired. It, it makes a big difference. It helps lower and average down your tax bill. Income splitting is a fantastic way um, to manage your taxes in retirement. But there are sometimes situations where people think or hope that they can split income and they can't. And if they try to do it, if they submit their income taxes in such a way that they've done it, but they shouldn't have, they could be in for some trouble. And I'm going to share with you now what those three main types are just so that you can help or so I can help you avoid that situation in your own taxes. So the first one that does come up from time to time is RRSP withdrawals. And this is a very special detail. So the, the RIF, the RRIF, Retirement Income Fund, is sort of the income phase or like the downhill phase if you want to think of retirement withdrawals as sort of a hill. The accumulation phase, you're going up the hill, that's in the RRSP. The decumulation phase is sort of coming down the hill, decumulating, that's the RIF. Withdrawals from the RIF can be split with your spouse, but withdrawals from the RRSP, meaning RSPs that haven't yet been converted to RIFs, those cannot be split with your spouse in any circumstances. So if you're taking... RRSP withdrawals, maybe even while you're retired and you haven't converted that RRSP to a RIF, just know that those RRSP withdrawals cannot be split or shared with your spouse. And that does come up from time to time and it is something that is important to remember. The second one is income and capital, excuse me, uh, income meaning interest and dividends and capital gains from taxable investment accounts. This is a huge one. A lot of times retirees will have, you'll have two members of the couple. One might have a, um, a non-registered account, meaning it's a regular taxable account. So they get uh, T-slips for income, for dividends, uh, for capital gains. They're going to get uh, T-slips for those, that types of income. And then when they go to file their tax returns, they may try to fiddle with those income amounts in order to lower their tax bill. And that is a big no-no. You cannot share income, capital gains from taxable accounts. You need to make sure that the income and capital gains um, that that is coming from those accounts is recorded and attributed to the taxpayer who holds and owns and funded that account. It's a huge issue that I see from time to time with with retirees, where I have to sort of flag this to them and say, we got to be careful here. We got to make sure that we sort of keep everything in its lane. We can't share that type of income. And then the third one is old age security and guaranteed income supplement. This one surprises people. Because Canada Pension Plan and Old Age Security are often sort of seen as companions to each other. Um, CPP can be shared. Old Age Security and Guaranteed Income Supplement, they cannot be shared and they cannot be split. So we talked about income splitting and illustrated what it means. We talked about examples of the types of income in retirement that can be shared or split. And we've highlighted some things to watch out for to make sure that you don't try to share or split. So where do we go from here? So I think the big one is if you're interested in learning more about income splitting, um, if you're working with an advisor, certainly talk to them and say, hey, like, are there ways that we can leverage income splitting, income sharing and in retirement to lower our average tax bill? That's the question to go ahead and ask. You can also ask your accountant 
Um, accountants, if you ask them proactively, they're always, or generally in my experience, very good at willingness to sit down and talk through these things with you. Oftentimes in springtime, when they're getting bombarded with last minute requests and T-slips, they may not be as likely to reach out proactively with these ideas. But if you reach out to your accountant, now is actually a really good time. We're kind of coming to the end of the busiest part of the tax season. So this would be a good time to call your accountant and say, hey, like, here's what's going on with us. We're coming into retirement. Talk to us about where our opportunities are for potentially income splitting, income sharing in retirement. So that's the second thing you can do. Uh, the third thing you can do is there's a link in the uh, description below. I've got a link to uh, book a, a quick call with me. If you have any questions, just book some time with me and we can have a chat. Uh, talk to me about your situation. I can sort of point you in the right direction, give you some ideas as it relates to uh, income splitting and any other questions that you might have for retirement. I hope that you've enjoyed this video. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. Remember to leave any questions or comments below. Subscribe to the channel if you want to get more videos like these pushed to the top of your feed. Thanks for watching this video and I hope that you have a fantastic rest of your day. Take care.